welcome back to the CS workshop, people. We have some very interesting sh stuff to show you today. Um, basically what we're doing is we found a new and des decided to try out a new way to manufacture our, uh, our good BPM5 research engines. Um, the reason for making this move is that we can, we can make much better tolerances and we can in general increase the build quality of the BPM5 engine significantly. Um, we are moving even one step further away from the old Franken 5 engine, which took a good deal of uh, intense, intensive adjustment on the anvil to get it right and put together. And uh, we are getting further and further away from this with the, uh, with the technologies and, and methods we just tried out today. So what I want to show you here is, uh, is just what we have achieved in just the last few days here. And they are simply represented by these uh, three different kinds of, of engines or partial engines we have here. What you see here is uh, four different inner liners for the BPM5 engine. We're doing those first. The outer one is simpler. So um, what we are doing here is that, uh, don't mind the length, that's an experiment with different uh, specific lengths of the engine. What's new and very, very interesting about these is that instead of a normal uh, metal shaped or metal spun uh, raw material uh, which was a one piece we now have several different pieces manufactured uh, by by CNC machining instead now usually these CNC machine parts they can't be very long or very big because you can't get the tools in and you can't get the the shrapnel out of there afterwards so we simply decided okay we're going to try to weld these pieces together and we, we had some experiments early on uh, with uh, semi-automated robot welding. Yeah. That's a huge exaggeration, but what we basically do is we find something to rotate uh, the, part we're try or the parts we're trying to weld at a very steady pace. And then we have something for holding whatever welding pistol we're using. And the result is an extremely uniform welding. And with a few tries and experiments, it's very easy to adjust for basically nearly perfect result and that's what we've been been doing so far <laughs> I'll just show you this part these are were three different parts of the same tube and they have been used for testing now what we've done is that we have just tacked them with uh, three different points so that they were were held together and then we did about a third of a circumference with one rotational speed and one current setting. Now from the outside they look reasonably similar besides being rather pretty but it's the bulge on the inside of the tube that's very very interesting. If you don't heat it enough or you rotate it too fast then you get an incomplete burn through. So that's basically loss of strength of your welding. If you give it too much heat or move too slowly, well, in the worst case, you make it a sinkhole and a giant hole in the tube. But if you get it just right, you get a bulge which becomes smaller and smaller until you have 100% burn through with no geometric distortion at all. And we're very close to, to achieving uh, this in, in this case. So after building up our confidence on this test piece, we decided to take it uh, one step further and try on one of these parts. So what we did first was that we, well, we modified our old lathe uh, with a uh, frequency drive, one that can make uh, the motor spin very, very slowly. So it takes about or more, than, well, about a minute to make an entire revolution on the lathe. So that's about the welding speed we need for these parts. Now it has been the heat trail is gone, but what's very basically very difficult to see down here is that the diverging part and the convergent part were manufactured as two separate pieces. They were then joined and welded right here at the throat. I just carefully grinded uh, a bit of the excess material away because the, what we're looking at right here is the surface or one of the surface inside the cooling jacket we have a spacing between this wall and the wall next to it of only two millimeters and that's where we have our entire fuel flow running along the length of the engine and keeping this inner wall 
cool so that it doesn't melt. So that means that any bumps, protrusions, uh, anything to distort the flow could have an influence on the cooling efficiency of the system. So uh, the, the tool holding the welding pistol for the circumferal welding in the throat, that can also hold a very small high-speed grinder. So again, carefully with the, uh, with the rails and the dials on the lathe, it's very, very easy to do a very accurate uh, grinding of whatever was protruding, bulging out into the cooling channel. So we've done this on all four of these engines and the, uh, the results came out pretty good. So that was step one. <clears throat> then we decided to take the next step, which was the lower part of the fuel manifold, the fuel distribution manifold. We also did a change on this one. Um, if you remember the, the other BPM-5s, it was a semi-circle shaped fuel manifold. And it was also a metal pressed part. Now, in this case, we opted for a, uh, a somewhat simpler fuel manifold, but it's one that we can manufacture ourselves at any time. It simply comes from a raw disc, and then we have removed uh, most of the material from the inside, and it just makes half the cavity necessary for, uh, for the fuel distribution manifold. We'll have another part which is basically identical, which will be fixed to the outer liner. And then we'll again weld these two by a, uh, by a semi-automated welding to join them. So that left us with something that looks like a, a goblet, really, but we still needed the cylindrical part of the engine, which is uh, just a cylindrical tube, which will make out the majority of the engine, actually. <clears throat> now, in this case, we were initially out of luck. Then we came up with the idea of trying to take standard pipes uh, of a slightly smaller diameter than what we needed, take a six meter length, plug it at both ends with uh, huge welded plugs with just two holes in one end. We then filled them up with water and we pressurized them to around 65 bars before we reached the, uh, well, the point where the metal started to yield and stretch. So about 20 bars later, we increased the diameter of these tubes due to deformation hardening with, I think it was almost like four millimeters in diameter. Um, we, we gambled on the deformation and hardening of this construction seal being stronger and dominant compared to the thinning of the material, which really weakens it. So we managed to, to do these uh, very long lengths of, of standard pipe increase their diameter, keep them straight, and then have a pretty uniform diameter increase. And I think we were like plus minus 0.3 millimeters along the entire length of the system. So we have some very good uh, round, straight pipes for this welding process. Using the same method of the old uh, lathe, uh, we simply just added the cylindrical part of the required tube in order to make an inner liner. And it so far worked out just beautifully. Uh, you can't, you can hardly see or feel the welding on the outside. It's nearly perfectly smooth. And after a few tries, we, we managed to, to adjust the speed and the current of the welding machine. So there's also just absolutely nearly perfect on the inside. We have a tiny bulge but in there, in the combustion chamber, as long as it's continuous and very small, it has absolutely no, uh, there is, it has no impact on all, at all on performance or cooling or whatever. So right now we just managed to make the most accurate, geometrically accurate BPM-5 engines we've ever done. So this is a huge uh, step forward in our, in our process, in our production process, and, and we just, <clears throat> well, we're, we're definitely uh, trying to make these engines as reliable and as easy to manufacture as possible. The ease of manufacture is also a pretty good driver for doing these experiments. So these engines will be done in, well, not that long. And then we'll have some brand new engines uh, for the firing range. So we're pretty much looking forward to that.